All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. And please don't forget to download the video as soon as we finish. And yesterday we have a video actually for those who did not see it. You can go to Patreon page and you will see the link updated because, as you know, we delayed the videos, but we still share them in different link. Uh, look like we don't have too many people here yet. Uh, it's Sunday, it's okay. Uh, I saw an article, and this article really <coughs> touched my heart. Uh, which heart? Yeah, yeah uh, because uh, the Quran says the, the man he have two hearts, and uh, I'm confused about which one now. Uh, but anyway, uh, an article is saying uh, one or one reason why I love Islam. One oh one. Okay. You know, always I I, I get paranoid when I see one on one stuff. I don't know why this is what is the point of the, the English when they say one oh one one oh one. I mean what highway one oh one. I mean what is that? So one oh one reason why I love Islam. Okay, why? Please tell us. I love Islam because it helped me to understand the purpose of my life. what what? Islam help you to understand the purpose of your life hmm. actually I like that and what is the purpose of your life as a Muslim who is a Muslim in the chat when they tell me what does that mean what is the purpose of life according to Islam do we have any Muhammadan in the chat one on one main basic okay I don't know about the 101 in Islam because it's fishy. Because if you remember, there's a chapter in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 101. It says, ask no questions. Hello? So look like 101 in English is different from 101 in Islam. Muhammad, because he have no answer, as the rest of, of the Muslims, he was afraid from questions. So he said, 101, ask no questions. 101, I have no idea. 101, Allah knows best. So... 101 this is why I said uh, you know I get uh, <clears throat> uh, paranoid with the 101 of Allah because the 101 in Islam have different meaning let us go to the verse uh, see I told you I told you don't go there here we go oh who you believe ask not about things which is made plain to you like what the heck so if we cannot ask questions about things made plain we will ask about a question about things we know what the, what the answer for it I mean, is, is it is it really that we ask questions about things it's plain for us if I know like okay if somebody gets sick he go to who to the doctor why because he wouldn't know what the problem because things is made a plain for him so ask questions not if you if for things made a plain for you And this is why I said when, uh, when I, I see the 101, and then 102, here we go, the, pro the problem in 102. 102, you will see why Muhammad forbid them from asking questions. Because people before you, they ask the same questions, they left Allah. Do you see it? Do you see the brothers and sisters? Huh? Brothers and sisters, do you see it? What is that, man? I'm really convinced that Islam is the answer for everything. And if you don't believe me, read 101 and 102. Anyway, anyway, this is, I mean, this is amazing. This is so beautiful. But you guys, because you're kafar, you don't understand. The Muslim, they say, they start, start asking the Prophet silly questions. Mm -hmm. What silly questions? As an example, they ask Muhammad, what is the spirit? Is that silly question? What Muhammad he did, he went for three weeks, he locked his himself inside the room, and he was thinking, asking Allah for answer, supposedly. Okay, and then the answer came. What is the answer? Sit in the ground, please, because you might fail in the from the chair. Look at this amazing answer. Chapter 17, verse number 85. Question, answer. There you go. Look at this amazing answer. 
They ask you, Muhammad, concerning the ruh, the spirit. Say, Allah knows best. This is not the question. They are asking you, what is the spirit? You tell them it's the command from the command of Allah, Allah in control of it. This is not the question. They are asking you, what is the spirit? Hmm? Allah knows best. Okay. Allah knows best. We go back to the article 101. As I said, you know, 101. Let us go to 101 stuff. So it helped me to understand the purpose of my life. But hold on. The purpose of your life in Islam is miserable. Why? Because Allah, he says, I create not a human and genie except to worship me and to be my slaves. Let us go to the yellow pages of Muhammad. The purpose of your life. This is the purpose of your life. Read it and laugh at yourself. Chapter 51, verse number 56. And Allah created not the genie or a human except to worship him. This is the purpose of your life, you idiot. Are you happy with it? Hello? While in Christianity, God, He created us to be called His children, to enjoy the glory of God with Him, the God of Islam. He created mankind for one purpose, His board. Do you see it? What the purpose of your life and why Allah he created mankind just to worship him in different place Muhammad he make it more clear about the purpose of your life brother let me I always but I don't know how many of you guys is uh, subscribe to my account in Instagram subscribe you will lose nothing I heard that uh, Allah will give to anyone who subscribe to my account 72 versions they are in the age of my grandma. I hope that would encourage you. So, you're a prophet, said. <clears throat> you're a prophet, said, not me. So don't blame me. I have nothing to do with it. I swear. I did not say that. It's your prophet. It always your prophet is the one who do the boo boo. The message of Allah said, By the one in whose hand my soul, were you not to commit sin, Allah would replace you. Okay, hold on, hold on. Here the translation is stupid, is not true. Let us replace it. What's them translations? Never been true. Never, never. So we have to dig a little bit in the dust, in the mud. Here we go. We found better translation. And this is Sahih. So don't tell me this is weak. Sahih Muslim. By him in whose hand is my life. Uh, <clears throat> if you are married, I think in this case you are swearing by your mother in law. Or, best scenario, it's your wife. Anyway, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of the existence. And he would replace you by those who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. Okay. So this is the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life, Allah is lonely. He needs you to commit sin. If you don't commit sin, he will slaughter you. Allah will grab you from your neck. He say, you idiot, why you are not committing sin? Say, Allah, I'm being a good guy. I'm not committing sin, Allah. He says, this is not the purpose of your life, you idiot. I created you and I made you because you need to commit sin and you ask me for forgiveness and you cry for me. Otherwise, you see, you have TV, I don't have TV. You you watch uh, music, I don't, uh, music is haram for me. I'm Allah. So what I will do for a living? So I created you, so you commit sin and then you cry, please forgive me, you know. what? Do I so if you don't commit sin, you are useless for Allah. That is the purpose of your life. 
suppose Chippet is dead. If we call Zach and Nayak and we ask him how he explained this, for sure Zach and Nayak, he have the answer. Actually, Zach and Nayak is the only one have answer for anything. Allah, he don't have answers, by the way. Yeah, Allah, he don't even remember the verses he, he said. But Zach and Nayak, he does. So if you call Zach and Nayak, he will say to you, hey, Brother Hitler, did the person in name the Christian prince, and he always make fun of the Quran, and the prophet, he always get him butted. Other example, he said, why the purpose of life is to worship Allah? The answer is very simple. Allah created us. He is the maker. And he is free to use us as he wish. And the prophet said, if you don't commit sin, Allah will kill you. I will replace you with people commit sin and ask for forgiveness. So the purpose of our life to ask for forgiveness. If we don't ask for forgiveness, so what is the purpose of our life? Isn't it obvious? Uh, uh, Zach and I, uh, okay, if we don't commit sin, why Allah is upset? It's very simple. Because Allah is alone, he don't have a wife, and he don't have a son. So he's bored. Uh, so because Allah don't have a son and don't have a wife, so now he found us like we are his toys, and he want to play with us? Exactly. And because you are an ignorant, you can understand. Allah, you are make you kafir, and Allah, he close your heart and seal your eyes. Uh, uh, okay, Zach and Naik, uh, uh, enough. I'm not going to stop talking, and I'm going to expose you. Uh, uh, Zach and Naik, you want to expose me? How? I'm going to tell everybody. That you went to the bathroom yesterday. Uh, uh, Zach and Nike, don't go there, man. I mean, this is a private business. Uh, uh, Zach and Nike, hold on. So if somebody go to the bathroom yesterday, he should be exposed? Exactly. Uh, but, uh, Zach, is it your prophet he received the chapter of Al-Fatiha when he was doing poo-poo? The prophet, he received Al-Fatiha when doing poo-poo, but this is not a normal poo-poo. Because he's the prophet. Uh, what do you mean not a normal poo-poo? It is different. The hadith said that when the prophet do poo-poo, the smell is like musk, and even the ground is swallow it. Do the ground swallow your poo-poo? Um, the toilet chair does. This is the toilet chair, you liar. This is not the same as the ground. Unbelievable. Okay, Zach and Nike, I really, I give up. You, you really, uh, you really convince me. This is the purpose of your life. This is the purpose of your life. Mm. Look how many people are saying you are killing me. Here we go. They will accuse me. I killed them all. Anyway, here we go. I became Muhammad. Now I killed everybody. <laughs> Unbelievable. You guys are crazy. What is the purpose? Allah, he made me know the purpose of my life. That is the purpose of your life. The purpose of your life is to commit sin. In order to keep yourself alive so Allah will not destroy you. And then you ask Allah for forgiveness. Hello? Forgive me, forgive me. I commit sin. Forgive me, forgive me. Uh, you're lying. You did not convert, commit sin since yesterday. I'm watching you. Well, I thought I have to say that to you so you don't kill me. You have to do sin for real, you idiot. And then ask me for forgiveness, okay? Don't call me again until you commit sin, real sin. What is that? I thought God is against sin. I thought God, he don't want us to commit sin. Not in the case of Islam. Allah is the devil, obviously. Allah is the devil who want people to do bad, bad things. And the purpose is just, he is bored. So ask him for forgiveness. Right? Can you play a thriller movie? What does that mean? And why when I play for you a movie? We have the biggest actor, Muhammad and Allah and Jibreel. What's wrong with you? Do you think there's better than those? Do you know that in the judgment day, uh, actually, sorry, in heaven, every Friday, brother, every Friday, Allah will invite the believers, brother, and they will witness three singers. Anyone remember what will happen? <clears throat> Every Friday, <clears throat> Friday evening, 
Allah will invite all the Muslims and the, each one of them is have his name in his chair I mean very organized community we have to admit and then Allah will ask Prophet David in Islam he's a prophet Prophet David to sing and David start like la 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 and then Allah will ask the Muslims have you ever seen better than this have you ever heard better than this the Muslim they will say no we swear by Allah we did not then he will ask Prophet Muhammad to sing and the Prophet Muhammad he will start saying we cut heads we cut heads we cut heads away Take them off, take them off from the neck away. And then and, and he, he will, Allah will ask the Muslims after he finish. Have you ever heard something better than this? The Muslim, they will say, no way, Allahu Akbar, takbir. And then, and then, brother, the final singer will take the stage, Allah himself. And he will recite the chapter of Ar-Rahman. Imagine, brother, Ar-Rahman. Reciting the chapter of Ar-Rahman, oh boy. I can't imagine that. What is that, man? Huh? And then when Allah is saying, He said to the Muslims, have you ever heard something better than this? And the Muslim, they would say, for sure, Allah not. No way. And the funny, this story will happen every Friday. And what make it more stupid, it happened every Friday, because if they heard last week, Muhammad, why you ask them, have you ever heard something better than this before? They say no. Well, they heard. Then they say that Allah is better. Every Friday, the same song, the same singers, the three of them in the stage. How boring, how stupid. If there's any Muslim here, you have an objection. Hmm? Let me see if I can find you the hadith in English. Anyway, we need to continue. But there is a there is a video actually. It's called uh, the description uh, of paradise. By Dr. Nabil Baikli, not Baikli, no, this is the one I debate. Dr. What? I forgot really his name. Uh, Dr. 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 Anyway, he's an Egyptian doctor from Al Azhar University. Um, he's a sheikh. And this was in the Dean show. And the guy, he says, Brother, brother, imagine, brother. Every Friday, brother, you are invited to meet Allah, brother. And Prophet David, and Prophet Muhammad, and Allah will sing for us, brother. Every Friday, the same song, the same singers. Every Friday. Any Muslim have an objection? Any Muslim? So what those articles are for? I find them very, very funny and very stupid. And actually, the purpose of life in Islam proven to us Islam to be false, because this is against what what supposedly God is about. God is anti sin, against sin. Why the God of Islam He require you to commit sin, or what He's asking you for to ask for forgiveness. So you're actually, according to Islam, your sin, your sin is the reason for you to stay alive. 
if you don't commit sin Allah will destroy you as you see by him who is hand my life is my life if you were not to commit sin and Allah would sweep you out of existence and this is totally different oppose all stories we heard like as an example the Muslim they copy the story of Noah from the Bible so how God he sweep them out for sin yet he will sweep you out for not committing sin so now if Adam was in heaven until now he commit no sin and he did not need to ask Allah for forgiveness Allah will sweep Adam and Eve this is how silly stupid this cult is why sometime you have some time please explain why Allah does not mean God first of all Allah does not mean God Allah is a name it's not one word Allah is a L and la we explained that many times so it's two words uh, Al la so if an Arab Christian he used the word Allah because simply he is under the occupation of Muslims for 1400 years if Isis occupy your town trust me you will see it you will see the word Allah from the first day because either you die or you say it so they will say to you in the Arabic Bible it says the word Allah but this is a translation that means nothing for me Allah is two word not one word Two words not one Al is a word mean God la is the name of the God and you can go right now search in Google God la and you will see this is the moon God as simple as that now we don't want to change the topic we we'll go back to the one or one reason to love Islam okay so the first one got busted the reason to the purpose of life in Islam is a stupid and it's anti actually anti good for God who created us just to commit sin otherwise he will sweep us out of the earth he is evil and he is demonic and he is selfish and he could not find something to play with except us number two I love Islam because it teaches me that there's one God who made me I feel like I want to cry, man. I, I, I was going to be upset, by the way, if the one who made me are two gods. I feel a lot better that it's one. I mean, how silly is that? If he is one or ten or five or seven, who care? I mean, look how silly they are. I'm so f I, f I feel good. Da, 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 da. So good. Uh huh. So good. Uh huh. Why? Because one God created me, not two. Like, what the heck? This is the reason to feel good. And the Creator, He loves me more than anyone. Who says that? We just showed you your prophet saying that Allah created you for one purpose, to be His slave. So He loves you, but He wanted to be your slave. Hmm. Uh, that's too much love. Then, I love Islam because without it, would not know Allah. If 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 if. This is things getting complicated now because Islam I know Allah I thought I know Allah because of Allah not because of Islam I mean you must be the one who wrote this article he must be a philosopher you love Islam because that you know Allah Islam is just a word means surrender what do you love I love surrendering surrender yourself to me Mm. that's deep I love Islam because Allah let down his mercy on me and guided me that's not what the Quran says that Quran says Allah he is the one who misguide as you wish and guide as you wish that's mean Allah is a bad person if we in the go in the Quran we will find this Guys, why we have only 600 people in the listening? Okay, we are going to change the topic. We are going to talk about what is the best lipstick. And that will bring a lot of people. And we will talk about short skirt. 
short skirt of the heaven of Allah where women they are wearing see-through let's look at the number here we go the number is increasing 601 602 607 we just say skirt look what look what happened the magical word I mean we just say the skirt and or the six oh six oh nine unbelievable man man oh man all right Allah he is the one who guide you ah. okay so what is this verse what is this verse the bad people Allah he made them bad people what kind of God is your God what's matter with you what's matter with you huh do you want to guide whom Allah has misguided deceive the word by the way the word here is a doll which mean he deceive in the English it's cause go astray but anyway we will go with the translation of the Muslims so who is the one who made them go astray Allah so who is the devil if the one who made us misguided is Allah what the devil job for living what he do for living he still falafel chapter 4 verse number 88 Do we have any Muslim? Are you going to guide? And look at the question, guys. The question, the question is is a stupid question. Because if we don't guide those who they are misguided, so we will guide who the one is guided. Like hello. The question itself is a proving that Allah is a silly idiot. Sometime Allah he remind me of the Pink Panther. Ta -ta what the heck is that even the pink panther don't do that Allah he enter and he found a group of investigators and they say we found a fingerprint he hold a piece of a glass and then his fingerprint is there and he says this have a fingerprint and this one have fingerprint and this one have a fingerprint and then he took the fingerprint, the real one, he throw it in the garbage, he break it. And he hold it by his hand. And he wipe out the real fingerprint. That is Allah. So Allah, he put his fingerprint. And he is saying, I am the one who must guide. And then Muhammad supposed he want to guide. And then Allah says to Muhammad, are you stupid or what? Are you going to guide the one who I made him misguided? Misguided. Do we have any uh, Muslim? Do we have any Muhammadan who wanna call me? Hmm? Hello. So until now, we found that those articles are stupid. They are pure stupid. Maybe Tafsir says something different. You see, uh, Mahdi, Tafsir says something different. So Allah says something, you Muslims say something. That's even more silly. It's clear saying, do you want to guide him who Allah has made him go astray? <laughs> even this one need Tafsir. I mean, even a very simple sentence, need tafsir, brother. Right? Yeah, because we, we are Muslims. And the Quran says it clearly in chapter 4, verse 143. And those whom Allah sent astray, this is the Muslim translation, which I don't agree with. In Arabic it says, Woman Allah who The one who Allah is not misguided, deceived. You can use misguided if you want. But as long as you are saying misguided by Allah, misguiding by Allah is the same as deceiving. How somebody can misguide me by deceiving me? 
وَمَنْ يُضْلِلُ اللَّهَ فَلَنْ تَجِدُ لَهُ سَبِيلًا Okay, translation of the Muslims, not my translation. And he whom Allah send astray, he will not find him for him away. To what? To Islam. Okay, but this is stupid. So based on this, the one who made the people of Quraysh go astray is Allah. But then later they converted to Islam. Don't they? Any Muhammadan? <clears throat> and why Allah is sending people astray? Is that what he do for a living? Additional to make it... Uh, Make a making version, guys. Do you know? Do you know how long it takes to make a version in the heaven of Allah by Allah? Who knows? How long it take to make one version, just one? Only one knows. No, for one thousand year. Thank you. Not forty thousand year. One thousand year. And here, by the way, you notice how fast Allah is. I mean, all of this, not only, by the way, he is not, this is not to make the version. He's just to soften her skin. And the first thing I ask myself, why her skin is made? Like, is she, is she an alligator? I mean, why is it going to take Allah 1,000 years to soften the skin of one woman? So what are you telling me? Allah, he wake up in the morning, he start like a, uh, uh, sanding his hair ass uh, uh, Allah there is here it's not uh, soft still here in this area okay shut up don't don't talk don't move Allah is soft in her skin by what sandpaper and I thought Allah if he wants something he say B is going to be I mean say B is soft skin and why you created her with a very tough skin may make her from the beginning soft skin what's wrong with you what about buying some Vaseline uh, Nivea, huh? Uh, get some cream. They will make. And what kind of women? Those women, they have, they, they have a skin need one thousand, one thousand years to be uh, uh, softened. It's made from what? Like uh, uh, we can make a, a, a concrete soft by the machines we have in less than five minutes, soft like a face of, of a baby. One thousand year. Anyway, come on, guys. Allah is he? I, I think maybe Allah he enjoyed this woman lying down in front of him. They are naked, so he start like the first one thousand year, the first maybe maybe the first nine hundred ninety nine 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 year. He is just looking at there like, mm, 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 look at this, look at the legs, <laughs> and then at the end he he finish it all in one second maybe maybe maybe. You know. What is that? Do we have any Muslim there? You know, I will believe Allah if he's trying to make Arabian people without hair, like me. It's going to take 3,000 years, not only 1,000 years. That is possible to believe in. Each time I go to swim, they kick me out from the swimming pool. They say, you cannot swim with your clothes. I'm not wearing my clothes. It's my hair. Unbelievable. And this is, by the way, this is why I don't debate atheist. An atheist, he will look at me, he says, look at you. Here we go. We can prove in a two second that the origin of the monkey is a human. Look at you. And we will lose the debate immediately. So do we have any uh, Abdul here or we are out of Abdul today? Any Abdul? Please don't say unbelievable. This is mine. I mean, come on, guys. I know two English words, and you take it from me. Potato and unbelievable. And now you guys are using it. So what I will use? I am the same as Allah. I made the Quran in Arabic, but most of the Quran is made in the foreign words. You should see a, a Christian prince, he go in the airplane. Or he goes somewhere. People, they ask him, do you like to drink uh, beer? Uh, Christian Prince, he knew only one kind of beer. It's called Hineken. I learned it since a long time ago. And that's it. I'm very expert in beer. Hineken. Actually, I learned a new one. Hold on. Uh, corona. I drink like once every week, like every year, once. If I travel like an airplane, etc. Otherwise, I don't really drink. <clears throat> 
And by the way, as long as we are talking about drinking, why Allah saying drinking uh, alcohol is great? I mean, in one verse, Allah He says that the alcohol is made of the devil. And in one verse, Allah He says it's a sign from Allah. Even alcohol is a sign from Allah. Black label is a sign from Allah. And look, guys, at the first translation. You drive strong drink. This is what the verse is saying. It says, Sakaran, Sakaran, alcohol. And then they add between two bracket. This is was brother before the order of forbidden of the alcohol drink. Okay, hold on. So once, once upon the time, Allah was praising alcohol. And then again, after a few weeks, Allah, he was not praising alcohol. He said it's made by the devil. So once, once upon the time, Allah says it's made by me. It's a sign from me. It's a miracle. And then in different verse, he says this is from the shaitan. I mean, isn't this a city? How is everybody? Everybody is doing fine. If you are not doing fine, we will call Zach and Nag for you. He's a doctor. Any Muslim have an objection? Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. You see, uh, people, uh, people who speak English are very weird. You ask them, are you doing fine? They give you one. You ask the Muslim, do you worship Allah? They give you a finger. What's wrong with people? Hello? I mean, the bad language is weird sometimes. What this uh, finger is about? Brother, what is that? You see a Muslim, he's dying, he put his finger. And he put it where? Up. Okay, hold on. Uh, is Allah up or down? It looks like you do not know that what is up now is down after uh, after 12 hours. Which means your up is down and your down is up. Where is Allah, brother? He's up. Okay, up where, brother? <laughs> Unbelievable. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Huh? What this finger is about? So until now, really, we could not find any Muslim who can say something good for us about Islam. Any Muslim? All the reasoning the Muslims they start to make in their articles is silly and doesn't make any sense. It's actually against Islam. Another reason. <clears throat> I love Islam, brother, because it teach me to say the truth. Really? Islam teach you to speak the truth. Are you sure, Abdul? Do you like to call a friend Abdul? Who is a Muslim agree with this? Who is a Muslim agree with this? That Islam teach you to speak the truth. Anyone? Hello? Hmm. What about taking false oath? We start from there, not from taqiyya. Hmm? In Islam, you can take an oath, false oath. He judge you by your heart not by your oath. So I can go to the court and I take an oath. I swear by Allah, 
I did not rape that woman. It's okay to do that. Because Allah, he take you accountable by what you have in your heart. So in your heart, you want to lie to us. In your mouth, you lie. In your heart, like I say, we, uh, they ask uh, Mimi Hijab in the debate with David Wood. He asked him, he said, Allah have body part. Uh, he said, who says so? But he knew that this is what the Quran is saying. So Allah, he will not punish a Muslim if he take an oath. An intentional oath. Have you ever heard of a God? He says you can take an intentional oath. What does that mean? It's mean you don't mean it. You don't mean to be truthful. As long as you don't mean to be truthful in your oath, it's not used against you. So if you ask a Muslim, swear, swear by Allah, you are saying the truth to us in a debate, he will swear because Allah we will take him by what is in his heart, not by what he's saying. Do you see it? In his heart, he wants us to believe in Islam. So he's lying. So in Islam, this is a good thing. So he lie, he swear by Allah, lying. Allah will not be against him for using his name lying because this is supposedly, it's a good thing. Do we have any Muhammadan have something to say? And exactly how an, how an oath can be an intentional. You see, Jesus says either you see nay, yay, yay, or nay, nay. We don't take an oath. And anything else is from the devil. People who they are always truthful do not need to swear. Swear is for somebody who always lies. And now he want to make you believe that now he is telling the truth. But usually he is a liar. So he swear. Allah have a different teaching that you can swear using the name of Allah, lying to people, and Allah will not judge you by what you say. He judge you by what you in your heart. Ah, oh, this is chapter two, verse number two to five. By the way, chapter 2 is the chapter of what? Anyone remember the name? What is the chapter name? Anyone remember? Nobody remember? The cow, exactly. Very beautiful. And why it's called the cow chapter? Hmm? Why it's called the cow chapter? Who is a Muslim want to help us? I am actually in love with this cow stuff because Originally, I am a Hindu brother. Man, I think this uh, this cow is a special one. She have like, say it again, please. I think she is saying like, uh, mm, mm, I mean, like it's a, like, don't wake me up. I don't know. Why it's called the cow chapter, Muslims? Anyone can help us? No. The cow chapter called the cow chapter because simply there is a guy. Okay, guys, sit down. Sit down. Sit down, kids. Everybody sit down. Bring your popcorn. Do you want me to tell you a story? Be honest. <clears throat> There's a guy who was killed. Uh, by somebody violent killing and then 
they brought the story to Moses. And now Moses want to find the killer. Who is the one who killed this person? And because Allah is almighty God, he come with a new discovery. That if you beat a person with some beef, he come back to life. So he told Moses, bring some beef and hit the guy with the beef. Mm. And then, brother, Moses, he hit the dead guy by the beef pieces, as you see here, uh, by uh, pieces of the cow. Okay, we do not know what it is. I hope it's not the penis. And the guy, he come back to life, brother. And then he woke up. He says, the one who killed me is CP. And then he died again. And this is how they were able to find who killed the guy by the help of a holy cow. I'm really impressed. That's so beautiful a story. Must be true. Anyone? Is this in the Quran? Jane, are you sure? I mean, I'm showing you the verse, Jane. What's wrong with you? Jane, okay, you are you are you are fired. I'm not going to hire you to hire you. Uh, to be the secretary of Allah. Actually, once I wanted the FBI headquarters, brother, and in the first uh, floor, there is a big refrigerator. I asked them, what do you have there? They said, we have dead bodies and dead cows. I told them, what do you do with it? They said, we bring dead bodies who nobody knows who killed them, and we hit them by the cow body and uh, yeah, they come back to life and by the way i have beef in the refrigerator because what if something happened to me uh, you know i told the neighbor if something happened to me i die uh, come to my house please hit me with some beef i will come back to life why you need health insurance just get some beef and hit yourself by the cow and then by the way the muslims they made an article saying science in the Quran about the same verse saying heart massage heart massage you idiot this is about a guy who died by violent killing by the sword what heart massage what does this have to do with his heart and look how they fabricate to, to make something out of nothing this is suddenly became heart massage you do a heart massage by beating a guy by a beef and do, do you see here it says that he died because of a heart attack you idiot they killed him. And guys, I love it when Allah, he says, and remember, remember what? We were not there, you idiot. Who is remember? Where, where do you get the story from? And remember, remember when somebody killed somebody? I don't remember. I wasn't there. I saw it. Where, where, where you get this story from? Like, do you remember? As it like something we witnessed. Muhammadan, do you think that Isa, when he resurrected people from death, he was beating them by beef or camel? Or maybe sardine? You never know. It may be tuna. Huh? Do you think it's possible to be ham? You know what? I'm glad nobody gave this idea to Mr. Bean. Otherwise, he will make a make a a, a, a program about it. He go there's there's a video of him. One of his program. He go in the funeral. If Mr. Bean he knew about it, he would bring some beef and he would start beating the guy. Mr. Bean. Who said we don't have a chapter for the fish? We have. Don't you know there's a chapter, it's called Noon? Noon. The first verse, Noon. What is Noon? You remember? 
it is the whale who carry the earth in its back hello <clears throat> do we have any Muslim no actually the Quran is like a sardine you know you have a chapter of the cow chapter of uh, 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 you know noon uh, you know the whale story uh, the spider Lankabut. okay why they call this one Ankabut? anyone knows why they call it Ankabut? the spider you see chapter 29 okay why because Allah the smart Allah he says the likeness of those who take awliya from those who they are Christians and Jews is the same as the likeness of a spider who built his house and it is the most weak but by the way according to science spider lines are the most powerful thing to the point they can make a bulletproof vest from it so Muhammad he thought okay by it's okay I, you put your hand here and you destroy it but the fact the spider lines are very powerful look how thin it is but it carry the whole body of the th spider so easy it's made from amazing material which can extend and will make you in trouble if there's a, a lot of amount of it you see because of our size a spider web is not dangerous for us but imagine if the spider web really bigger a lot bigger than us then we will be trapped and it's going to be impossible for us to break it you know what I mean the spider web is easy for a human being to break because of the size of the web and our size how heavy we are so this spider web is made for insect but imagine if the spider were really huge and they have a huge web like them then the spider he can trap you in his web and it is the most powerful chains you ever can encounter by the way do you know why the spider are not big who knows why why spider are small I mean the size we have I mean it's not too big anyone knows why guys imagine if the spiders are really big unbelievable that would be the same as horror movie I'm telling you let me show you forget about Islam let's take a break from the stupid cult Islam you know take a break a little bit <clears throat> To be honest with you, I'm, I'm sick of this. But uh, I mean, who are going to clean the garbage? Nobody. I have to do it. All right. So, guys, look at this. Imagine this beast is a huge. You guys, you have no idea what this earth contain. This is a beast. This is a very horrifying beast. Terrifying. So imagine this beast is in a big size. Big, like maybe an elephant or even bigger. And actually, all what take those little insects to go huge is a change the average of oxygen in the earth. And then all animals will be so big, especially insects. Very scary, isn't it? Actually, most of us we see as a human, we see things in a, in a funny way. As an example, when you see a little tiny bird, what do you see? You see something cute, right? Bird. Look how beautiful. 
But, but for a different creature, a bird is a beast. Literally. In my yard, I see the birds, how they are grabbing the worms. So how the worm she look at the bird? Do she see him cute? <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, uh, how we see things is depend what is that thing is for us. If we are the food of the birds, then we will call the birds the beast. But because they are small, tiny, and they don't, they cannot hurt, hurt, you know, hurt us. So we say they are cute and they are beautiful. But in fact, those are little beasts too. Most of their food is meat. Most of their food is literally meat. We go back to the topic. Do we have any Mohammedan? Can warm hear or see? No, I'm saying, uh, no, though, it's not about hear or see. But imagine yourself, you are an insect, let's say. Insect, they can see. And then the bird eat you. <laughs> but for sure, their favorite uh, food, I can tell, is the worms. It's like a yummy shish kebab. Read Surah 2778. Do they sell? We don't want to change the topic now, Mimi. Do we have any Muslim here? Anyone? Hello. Why we have no Muslims? Let me let me open my Skype. Maybe by mistake a Muslim he contacted me or something. See, life is boring without Muslims. Let us open Skype. But I'm sure there's nobody there. <clears throat> Nobody, no Muslims. All right. Any Muhammadan? So you know what what uh, the purpose of our podcast today to show you that when Muslims they made articles about uh, what is beautiful about Islam, all their claim is a lie. I cannot find one thing is truthful in this article. And actually, if there is any Muslim in the chat, he can point for me one of those. Until now, we read one, two, three, four, and we prove all of them they are lie. I love Islam because teach me to speak well or keep silent. Really, was your prophet speaking well? When he says kill the Christians and the Jews was your prophet speaking well when he says the most person Allah he hate is a black man was your prophet speaking well when he says kill every black animal kill every black dog was your prophet speaking well when he says the one who is proud about his heritage tell him to go and bite the penis of his father no screen okay sorry Islam teach you to speak well? Islam teach you to say that the Christians are nudges, dirty, filthy, kuffar, the worst of the creatures, same as the Jews, same as the Hindus, same as the atheists. Islam ordered me to either to speak well or keep silent. You made me cry, brother. Not a single thing is truthful in this article. I love Islam because it teach me to think really about other people needs before my own. Islam teach you that. I 
I thought Islam says that the best of the booty is for the Prophet. Is that what do you mean? You have to think about the Prophet first. Islam says if you're if the Prophet Muhammad his eye fell into your wife bum, you have to give her to him so he can sleep with her. Is that what do you mean about thinking about others? A brother, Muslims always think about each other to the point too much love. Muslims, they want to build a mosque in Manhattan, New York. Will cost them hundreds of millions of dollars. But they don't have money for those Muslims. Muslims have money to donate, to make bombs, war all over. But they don't have money for peace. Brother, I'm not sure what do you mean by what you are saying, brother. It's very touchy. Very, very touchy. It must be truthful, your statements. They have money for guns. But they have no money for food. They have money for mosque. But they have no money to build university. Manufacture. They have money for somebody who wanted to suicide himself in a bus station. Is that what you are talking about? Why you want to build a mosque will cost you 100 million dollars at least in Manhattan when 100 million dollars can feed all the Muslims in Somalia for a year? And isn't it Islam teach you to hate others? Is that how you think about others? Let us see what Islam says. Even your family, your own family, your father, your brother are your enemy. Is that how you think about others? That you cannot take your father and your brother as a friend? And why? They are they are the evil doer. See, the translation here is very stupid. Just because they choose to disbelieve in Allah, suddenly you became an enemy for them. Muhammad Ansari saying, CP, you are a coward. Muhammad Ansari, why you don't call me? Mr. Ansari, why you don't call me? What do you say? Let us see who is the coward. Huh? Why you don't call me? Let me tell you who is the coward. The coward is the God who cannot defend his prophet Muhammad, but yet when Jesus he had risk according to Islam, Allah he run with Jesus. That is a coward behavior. The Christian Jesus, he did not run from the cross. The coward Allah, he ran away with the Isa. That is a coward behave. The coward Isa, he asked one of his followers as one of the stories of the Muslims to take his place. That is a coward behavior. The hero he run, somebody else died for him. Your prophet Muhammad, he asked his cousin Ali to sleep in his bed so Muhammad he can run. That is a coward to make a child risk his life to save you. Right? Heroes, they die to save the children, not the opposite. Your prophet, he asked a child to sleep in his bed. So supposedly if they come to kill him, they will kill the child in the bed. Who is the coward? Hmm? Are you going to do more podcasts? I don't know. You know, for me, they invite me. I said, no problem. They are good people. Any Mohammedan?
Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to say something to us useful about Islam? Until now, we found zero reason to believe in this cult. Zero. I'm a liar. Okay. I will go with you guys. He said he's a liar. Did he say that? Okay. Hold on. According to the Quran, all lies come from Allah. Is lying a bad thing? You will say yes. All bad things are from Allah. All evil stuff is from Allah. The Quran says, Allah is the one who deceived the Christians. So if I am deceived, and because of the deceiving of Allah, I lie, as you say, that's mean Allah is the biggest shaitan. Are you there? Are you against this? Are you against the Quran? The Quran says, Allah he is the one who misguided us. He is the one who deceived us. Why Muslim don't eat boar? What is boar? I don't know what is the word boar mean. What is that boar? I never heard this word before. I'm drinking tea, guys. Somebody want some tea? Halal tea. The Muslims, with their madness, they start putting stickers on shoes. It says halal. Are you going to eat the shoes you eat it? Get Skype, and I will call you and crush you. If get Skype, I will call you. If, why if, get Skype. It's for free. If you get Skype, you will call me and crush me. Okay, get it. Guys, if, if. If. If I got a Skype, if I got Skype, if I got Skype, I will call you and crush you. If got Skype, if I got Skype, you know, if Allah is God, He can crush me too. You want two days to get Skype? Okay, two days. He's using. He's a Muslim. He's using the internet of the neighbor, the Wi-Fi of the neighbor. I understand, brother. All of them do do that. A Muslim, he will come to your. He will send his wife to your house. He say, "Hey, hey, uh, how are you? Do you buy some stuff? What do you buy from Amazon? Oh, really? Okay, let me search. What is the name? What is the password for your uh, internet? You give her the password because suppose she's in your house. You want to search. She go home. Okay, we got the password. No need for internet, brother. Hmm? Any Abdul? By the way, uh, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. A Muslim, he was asking, is it halal to steal electricity? Which means you hook up your cable on the company or whatever. Let us see. This is a Muslim website. I have nothing to do with it. And the Muslim believe it is halal to steal electricity and to steal water. Why? Because the Prophet, he said, the three things should not be forbidden for a person. Okay, what are they? Water, 
food and fire and based on this the Muslim they say well I should not pay for water I should not pay for fire I should not pay for food <laughs> Uh. so if we translate this wish here let us see the question is is it right it's halal to steal what do you think about the fatwas that we can steal water and electricity based on the prophet saying that the Muslims are partners in three water and food and fire translation do you see it Islam permit theft he will hook up his line to the water company from behind the meter he will hook up his cable electricity from behind the meter and if he can get food for free he would do that if he can get gas for free he would do that it's halal no he let him give me my skype he will not find it by himself he can give me my skype i will call him If you are a Muslim only, you can, I, I will call you. If you are not, no need. Do we have any Mohammedan? And look, guys, look at this religion. I mean, why even this is a question, unless it is a very widespread that they practice it? Especially here, they are speaking about stealing electricity from Muslims. If it is not from Muslim, there's no need to question. You can. Here is asking, is it okay to steal from Muslims? If he is not a Muslim anyway, yes, you can. No problem. Your shake will crush me. I have a lot of glue. That's why I bought a lot of glue. I went to Amazon and I told them I want to glue. All of you Muslims crush me. You will not believe it how many time I was crushed in my life. Look at my, I'm not using my fingers no more in the keyboard because they are crushed, brother. I'm using my nose now. Who is a Muslim have the courage and the knowledge? Nobody? What was her name? Who her name? Who? <sighs> Any Abdul? Ah, your Sheikh Abdul Wadud, he will bust me. I remember Abdul Wadud, very smart. Uh, brother, you are asking so many questions, brothers. Uh, I'm going to answer you, brother. Uh, now I have to go, brother, because it's time for prayer, brother. But it was not the time for prayer. We have the video there in the channel. Go and watch and laugh at Abdul Wadud, the Sheikh. Shall we play it again, just for fun? Do we have another Muslim Sheikh? You wanna? Uh... Hmm? Who was a Muslim Sheikh? 
What? Yes, you wanna you want me to play Abdul Wadud? Come on, leave the guy alone. The guy is. Abdul Wadud. <coughs> Let us see Abdul Wadud. Sheikh Abdul Wadud. Sheikh Abdul Wadud. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Let me highlight for you so you can see. It okay. says here, you know. Uh, so when the messenger he was reciting, he revealed to Muhammad. Uh, to him, Surah An Najm, by the star, when it saith, Surah uh, chapter 53, the Messenger of Allah bless him and give him peace, recited, recited it. But when he reached, uh, uh, have ye uh, thought upon the Allah and Al Uzza and Manat, the third, the other, uh, chapter 53, verse number 19 to 20, the devil put in his tongue that he had secretly wished. And hoped for and said, These are the mighty grands, the Garanik, and their intercession is to be hoped. And then when Quraysh heard him saying that, when Quraysh they heard this, they, they were very pleased, and the Messenger of Allah blessed him and give him peace, uh, uh, carried on reciting until the end of the surah, and then he prostrated, and the Muslims followed. Uh, and they prostrate, and all the idolaters they are prostrated uh, there too, and those all they were present, whether they are uh, uh, believers or disbelievers, all of them they bow down together except the man. His name is a Walid because he was an old man. So your source, my friend, saying clearly that your prophet he worshipped the three daughters of Allah, he granted them prayer, and he was teaching. Claiming that Allah taught him to say that the three daughters of Allah they are to worship and ask for intercession. What do you say? If you look at the uh, the translation, right? The translation is telling you hmm. the messenger of Allah, Allah bless him, hmm. gave peace and care on reciting the end of the surah. So that means that he was reciting Quran and he went to sajda to Allah. He didn't do sajda to the Latin Uzza. Yeah, but he mentioned already, already he mentioned that Allah and Al-Uzza, he acknowledged them as their intercession is a must. And then he bowed down after the end, no problem. That, the, that yes. was the problem. The that was the problem at that time that the Mushrikini Maka, mm -hmm. they were worshipping, they were worshipping Latin Uzza. Mm -hmm. And your prophet, he worshipped them, as you see, he, he mentioned their name. He was, he was reciting the mm -hmm. verses of Quran. Okay, what he said, what he said, he said that the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is a must. Right? So, your that prophet... Was, that was the must for the Mushrikin in Makkah. Yeah, but he is the one who said that. He is the one he who said, said... He said that was the must for the Mushrikin in Makkah. No, 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 so he did not, no, 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 he did not say it's a must for the Mushrikin. He was reciting chapter of the Quran. He was not reciting... What, what what they believe he was reciting Quran chapter of Najm, so he was mm -hmm. reciting in Najm, and he inserted he inserted in the Najm that the three daughters of Allah their intercession is a must. It's, he is not saying don't say that he was saying it's a it's a must for them. That is that is not true, my friend. That is not to fabricate. Don't fabricate things. Some of your prophet did not say. It's not, it's not fabricated, brother. Okay. I think you have a lot of questions about Islam. Mm -hmm. I think you 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 are. Um, you are questioning Islam by so much that uh, you have read everything mm -hmm. good. So mm -hmm. That's uh, well done for you. Mm -hmm. You have read it, but you have not read it with a scholar of Islam. Mm -hmm. So you need to sit with a scholar and learn from them mm -hmm. to teach you the mm -hmm. Quran and, and Hadith in detail. Okay. So you can learn what Quran and Hadith really is about. Mm -hmm. So you're asking me now to go and uh, learn from the scholars. I thought you are a scholar, you are a sheikh. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. To so you. as long you're you a sheikh, why you are changing what is written there? It says that the prophet, he said, that the three daughters of Allah, the Gavani, their intercession is a must. At the end, he bowed down, and all the pagan they want to bow down together. And not only that, the people of Quraysh, they said, we never heard Muhammad creating our gods as much as good as today. So here we go. He greeted them. He said their intercession is a must. And he bowed down at the end, which means he bowed down for whatever he said. Whatever he said in that chapter, he bowed down and he started worshipping. He said that the three daughters are included in his prayer. He, he, he pray. He's saying, reciting Quran. And then he says the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is a must. And then at the end, he bowed down. He bowed down for what? For every word he said before he bowed down. So, yes, he bowed down to the idols, the three daughters. And as you see, even the, the Quraysh, all, suddenly all of them together, they are worshipping the same God. And not only that, they said, Muhammad, he never mentioned our gods as good as today before. And this is why people, they thought that Muslims and, uh, and the Arab, they became united because now they are worshipping the same God. And it is Allah, and it is the daughter of Allah. So don't tell me go and ask the scholars. You can you claim to be a scholar, and this is a scholar. The one is talking here is a scholar, by the way. This is Asbab al Nuzul. This is not my book. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that you need to sit face to face with a scholar and have your question, you know, in front of him. Mm -hmm. You are saying in this ayat or the Surah Najar, ayat number nineteen. <clears throat> have you ever considered the idols of Latin Ulza? Mm. And then about the other, the third, and the Manat, mm. then is, is it that you that he has male and female, he has Allah has females, mm. and it's so it's totally unjust division. Mm. And after that, there is nothing but the names you and your forefather have invited. Allah has sent down no authority attached to them. They are the following nothing but conjunction and what their soul desire while guidance from their Lord Lord mm. surely reach them. Yeah but, but the question my friend the Quran is saying it, now it, that Shaitan Yeah but the Shaitan the Quran the Hadith says the Quran says that Shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad satanic verses correct Shaitan was trying to do that, but no. Muhammad no. never listened. No, 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 not trying. No, no, never my friend, let us be honest. The, 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 the statement in front of you where it says he was trying, he wasn't trying, he was successful. As you see, it says here the devil he throw in his tongue. He throw already and your prophet recited that. He did not try, it was successful. Your prophet, he said that the, the three daughters of Allah, their intercession is to be hoped for. So he was not a trying, he did. The, when the messenger, read carefully with me, my friend, okay? Read carefully, please. When he arrived reciting Allah and Uzza and Manad, the third, he, the, the devil, let us read together, the devil put in on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for, which means the devil he wished for. These are the mighty grants, the granite, and their intercession is to be helped for. So your prophet, he said, what the devil he put in his tongue said that and everybody heard him that the three daughters of Allah Allah and Manat and Uzza their intercession is a must and hoped for so you're a prophet recite recited satanic verses and not only that you will see in the same page you will see that the angel later angel Jibril came to Muhammad and he said to him those message those verses you recited before is not from Allah here we go at the evening, read with me carefully. At the evening, Jibreel, peace be upon him, went to the Messenger of Allah. Uh, Allah bless him and give him peace and said, What have you done? You, you recited to people that which is did not bring from Allah. Glory is to He. And you said what He did not what I did not say to you. So, my friend, don't tell me that Satan was trying. Shaitan was able and he was successful and even Jibreel he came to Muhammad and he said to him what you have done Go ahead my friend answer So it is easy if you know that most of the past year of the Quran hmm. that you know there is not most sometimes they are not recommended by all the scholars uh -huh. 
you, you, you know about this. What, is, what is the one you recommend for me? As long as this one is not recommended. Uh, I, would, I would recommend Ma'arif um, al-Quran by my student. He's telling me to make it easy for... Which one? For the, which one? Which one? Ma'arif al-Quran by Mufti Muhammad. Oh, this, is a, this is a new. Are you Ahmadiyya or something? This is a new. Those are you scholars? Do, who are those scholars? Those are not scholars. I never heard of them. So you are saying to me, Imam yeah, like Al-Wahidi, Al-Tabari, Al-Tabari, the real Imams are not considered by you, but a guy who just born yesterday, he made a book, and this is the, the this is the one who will explain the Quran to us. Don't you think that this is a hypocrisy? It's not hypocrisy. So why, how you don't accept the original the scholars? How come now this, this guy, you are calling him Mufti? He learned his religion from who? From those scholars. So how now he can explain the Quran better than them? Better than them. What? You, you, how? You how? He, so how? Is so what? He's so good. So now, what we will do with this? Are you saying that this guy? He? What? what can you read for me what this guy he said about this verse? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What your scholar he, he, he said? He's saying that we did not send any messenger. Allah says, mm. "You are not our prophet." He faced a situation that, when he recited the revelation, the satanic cast doubts about what he recited. The satanic people or those people who are worshipping mm -hmm. Oza. Okay? So Allah nullifies what the satan has, then Allah makes his verses from Allah is all knowing and unwise. This is an interpretation now? He did not He did not give interpretation. He's just quoting the verse again. I mean, this is funny. How this can be interpretation? He's just so oh, my friend. Okay, I, I, will, I will go. I will go with this funny interpretation because he did not give interpretation. He did not give interpretation. Secondly, you just admitted that Shaitan he cast in the mouth of Muhammad, and Allah will delete it. What Allah deleted from mouth of Muhammad? What Allah deleted? Not send any messenger before you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter this case this case here is about muhammad my friend no problem no problem don't, don't, my, my friend each time i talk to you you start reading from zero it look like you know we have a machine talking to us my friend i'm asking you a friendly please friendly the, the verse saying the verse saying and you quote for me and i heard you that he said that shaitan cast cast okay shaitan cast what exactly can you quote for us what he cast in the mouth of muhammad the satan cast doubts about what he recited. What he recited? Can you tell me? This is not the question, my friend. This is not the question. You just said shaitan he cast in the mouth of Muhammad. The question is, what he cast in the mouth of Muhammad? Can you tell me the words? About what he recited? Yes, about what he cast. What, what the shaitan cast? Allah will take it off, correct? Okay, but what he cast? What the shaitan said to Muhammad? As you said in Surah Al Najm that Latin Uzza was the was the people of of Quraysh that are worshipping Latin Uzza at that time. This is not the question. So, this is not the question. My friend, I don't know what's wrong with Muslims. The second we ask them a question, they go in panic mood. I'm asking you friendly, fine, what right? what the Shaitan, what the Satan told Muhammad when he was speaking? What Satan made Muhammad, what he threw in his tongue? What is the sentence? Can you quote the, the sentence for us? So the Shaitan they put Nothing in the mouth of Muhammad. They were there in, the, in the mouth of Muhammad. They were trying to uh, put something of Latin. Also. Where you are you getting this from? I mean, what, what do you mean trying? The, the, it says there that he, the, even the Quran says, Shaitan cast, Allah will take it off. Not a trying. Who trying? It is Shaitan he cast in the mouth of Muhammad. Muhammad is from the satanic people or he is a prophet. He is a prophet, supposedly. So the, the Quran confirmed that Allah cast in his mouth. Why are you changing the words? I'm asking you, my friend. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. First of all, first of all, when you say to me, uh, you, you hear me? You hear me? When you say to me that they are trying, you are you are corrupting the Quran. The Quran says it clearly that Allah will take what Shaitan cast in the Quran, not in the book of the pagan. The pagan is not. They are not following Allah anyway. They don't have a book. Come on. The verse says clearly, whatever Shaitan he cast. Allah will take it off. Take it off from where? From the Quran, not from the book of the of the pagan. The book of the pagan. You don't have a book. Okay, so that the, the Quran, the Quran. Okay. 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 My friend, do you, you, know, you, you, you have do you have first the concept of God? Can you explain the concept of God to us? The concept of God? Which one in, yeah. is, in Islam? No, no, the concept of God uh, of Christians. Why well, you want to change the topic? We'll go because the thing is, at first you don't know uh, what to follow and what not to follow. Really, and you are the one who knows what to follow, what not to follow. 
Yeah. Okay. If you know how to follow and what to follow, why your prophet he kisses stone? For me, my God, he said, you asked me about the concept of God. It says, don't make images what is in heaven or in the sky and not to worship anything except God. How Muhammad he kiss a black stone? Is that a concept of God to kiss a stone and to believe that it's a holy stone? Is that a prophet of God who says to him that I am going to protect you and you are masoom? And then we see that Muhammad receiving satanic verses. Is that the concept of God to say that God is one? And then you say Shahada, which is contained the name of Muhammad and the name of Allah. How that can be one, but yet two on the same line, associating the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Muhammad. You say Muslims, you say Allah and his prophet knows best. You are associating the knowledge of God with the knowledge of a man. How you say that God is one, but knowledge of Muhammad is equal to Allah knowledge. How you say that God is one, but Allah, he wrote the name of Muhammad in his throne. How you say that the name of God and you say Allah is one God. But then you say to me that Allah, he says, if I want to take a partner, I will take it from our kind. How Allah is going to take a partner from his kind? Can you answer me? Okay. Now the mic is mine, right? Go ahead. Okay. So at first you said the black stone. Hmm. The black stone, is, as if you know, that there, there was a fight at the time of Quraysh mm -hmm. where Prophet peace be upon him, he, he took all the leaders of the mm. Quraysh and took the stone towards the Kaaba mm. and placed it there. And people would go around the Kaaba, make the of the Kaaba and kiss it. Okay. Right? Okay. So your Prophet is so, following the pagan, you mean? He is just kissing it the same as the pagan before him? So as you, if you know that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he became Prophet at the age of 40. Okay. He, became, he was a Nabi before, from mm. his birth, but he became a Rasul at the time of age of 40. Mm. Okay, when he was go, when he would go around the Kaaba, he would test the stone because the, this stone came straight from Jannah. Mm -hmm. As if you know that this stone was whiter, mm. whiter than the milk. And people, because people kissing it, it became black. Mm. And because most of the Muslims nowadays, they kiss it because... They kiss it because of for the love of Rasulullah. Mm. Okay. Can I make a comment, please? Can I make a comment? Okay. Can I make a comment? Yes. yes. Okay. So you just said to me that you Muslims you kiss you kiss it because the Prophet kiss it. But why the Prophet kiss it? Okay. So our Prophet, peace be upon him, he kissed it because it was made by Allah in Jannah. Okay. But you just said to me, my friend, hold on. But you just world. but you just said to me, but you just said to me. We kiss it just because the prophet kiss it, which means you are saying we don't kiss it because Allah he made it. We kiss it just because the prophet kiss it. Everybody heard you. And that is a contradiction because if you are just kissing it because Muhammad kiss it, not because of anything you know, else. The of the Quran, okay, no, it doesn't say actually at your Allah or at your Rasul only. It says at your Rasul or at your Allah, which means obey Muhammad first and then you obey Allah, correct? Okay. So how so if you know how, the, if you know the ayah, yes. So how so how you say how you say so, Muhammad is a prophet when you when the Quran says you have to obey Muhammad first before you obey Allah. So huh? that's 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 the command of God. If the command of God comes, you have to how I know that this is the command, command of God. If God tells how, you to first follow Jesus and mm. then follow God, my friend, would you, how would I know that this is the God. command of God and why God He says obey a man first and then obey me? You didn't say. Obey me only because a man is a sinner and he can do bad stuff. Is Muhammad God? He don't do any mistakes. How you say to you? How he say to you? Obey Muhammad and then obey Allah. And why Muhammad first and then Allah second? How Allah can became second before? And if, you, if you know that all the messengers of God, they are all Muslim. They don't have any sin. They are, they are sinless. That's not that's not true, my friend. Isn't it the Quran says that Allah He forgave Muhammad for the past sin and the coming sin? So are you saying to me Allah He did lie in the Quran? Listen first. Um, you wanna listen to me or you wanna keep on because you're I'm, listen, I'm listening, my friend. But you are making a contradiction. I have to make a point before you change your mind because it says in chapter forty-eight, verse number two. May Allah forgive to you your sin in the past and your sin in the coming time. So how you say to me Muhammad is masoom, but the Quran confirmed that Muhammad Allah, is a sinner. Allah is telling through the mouth of our, our prophet, he's telling us that Allah will forgive the sins of those who accept Islam. No, that's not true. Not true. Not true, my friend. Chapter 48, verse number 2 is speaking specifically about Muhammad. So please, if you are a sheikh, you know, I, ex I accept from you a decency and honesty, not lies. 
Are you fabricating the, the, the interpretation for the verse, making it about the Muslims? This is about Muhammad himself, not about anyone else. Why you are, my friend, changing the mean? I don't want to say the word liar. I, I, you know, I promise myself to speak to your respect. But this is absolutely false what you said to me. This verse only about Muhammad. Who are you talking about? Chapter 48, verse number 2. 48, verse number 2. Okay. Hmm. Al-Fatih. Take it easy, my friend. Drink some water, please. So please, if we go back to the the history of this surah, this surah has been revealed when when Mecca was Fatah. When Muhammad he came back to Mecca and he, he forgave all the people of Mecca, all the people who did all the bad things to Muhammad, peace be upon him, at that time. Yeah, but this is about your prophet. The Quran confirmed that he is a sinner. So don't tell me that this is about the believers, not about Muhammad. So now we correct the thing. Thank you very much. So the Quran confirmed that Allah is may forgive the sin of Muhammad and his in the in the in the past and the one to come. So how you say to me that the Prophet protected, but yet he is a sinner. And the same time that would be a contradiction because how he said to us, obey Muhammad, he is a sinner, obey him. Obey him, whoever obey Muhammad, obey me. But now I have to obey a sinner. That will make me obeying God. But if you are a sinner, that means I have to obey any sin you do because you are a sinner, you are not perfect. Are you Muslims saying that Muhammad is a perfect God, but he's a man? We're not saying that he's a God. Okay. We're saying the prophet of Allah. Okay, but you are saying to me, but you are saying to me he's masoom. What masoom mean? Masoom does but not does not make does not make mistakes, correct? Yes. Okay, but how he, he don't make mistakes, but he do sin. His sin is a big, big mistake. Sin is a big mistake, not a mistake. <coughs> as we know that prophets, mm -hmm. upon them, as you know that in you know, the Quran used to come on them, the Wahi, mm -hmm. they used they, they 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 used to go into a state. Sometimes the Wahi will came come to them. Mm -hmm. uh, in a at the time where, where when they will they will be on a horse, sometimes in the journey, sometimes you know, in, in, in any time they could, they could, they could come to them from, from Allah. So Sometimes yeah. if there was a problem. Mm. So if you really look into the Quran and you have so many questions, I know that you, you anytime if, if I speak and speak, you will keep on asking and asking and asking questions. And, you know, we are not asking so questions. We, we are in a better can understand the topic, my friend. To, we, me and you, mm. my friend, mm. we need to sit together. Mm. We need to sit together and Inshallah, mm -hmm. we need to go together. Inshallah, mm -hmm. Allah will help you understand and mm -hmm. understand the wisdom of the Quran mm -hmm. and what what is the why why everything why why everything was revealed in this way and why how the ayahs of the Quran was revealed and how the Quran was compiled together. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, you will have a better understanding. So, you, so my friend, inshallah, you will not answer me. Inshallah, you have no answer. Inshallah, you are telling me I'm, I cannot answer you. Yeah, yeah, then, then answer me, my friend. Then answer me. Why you are giving me this speech about Inshallah, Inshallah? I have a question for you, and you are trying to avoid it. Inshallah, you will not answer me. Inshallah, we will sit together. You know, you know, my friend, we will not sit together ever. I mean, I don't know where you live. I don't know who you are. So, what do you mean, Inshallah, we sit together? I want an answer. 
How you say to me that the Prophet is my son, protected? Do you, do you live Quran in New York? No, I don't live in New York. I live okay. far away, no. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we do not need to sit together. Here we go. We are talking. Everybody can hear us nice and, uh, and clear. So the Quran confirmed that Muhammad is a big time sinner. So how the Quran says to us, if you obey Muhammad, you obey me. But Muhammad is a sinner. How I can obey God by obeying a sinner? It's like imagine I am going to obey a guy. You just told me he is a sinner. And the Muslims, uh, sorry to say, they lie to us. They say Muhammad is protected by God. He don't do sin. But as you see, the Quran in many verses, by the way, this is one of them, confirm that Muhammad is a big time sinner. And not only that, what kind of God he gave a permission and license for sin to Muhammad? He said to him, I forgive your past and your coming sin. What is that? Since when God, he gave a license for sin. Why Muhammad, he can sin as much. He has sin, even sin for the future. He will forgive it. What does that mean? So if you know, if you believe in God, right? Do you believe in God so yourself? If, if you believe in God, if, if you know that God, even today, if he says, if the day of judgment happens today, right? And God says, I will enter all the people who are, who are making shirk against me. I will, I will make them enter into Jannah. Would you question him? It's not about the question. I question why not. I mean, I question if something doesn't make sense. If there's a contract, isn't it the Quran said, my friend? Isn't it the Quran says why they cannot understand the Quran? If this book is not from God, you will find a lot of contradiction. So Allah, He told you, He told you that if you, if you, you know, this is how you know that this is book is from God or not. So He said, yes, question me in this case. I know in chapter five, verse one hundred one, it says, ask not questions. But here, Muhammad is trying to silence anyone who asks me question. But the Quran says, Allah the Barun al Quran. Can they understand the Quran? If this book is not from God, they will find another, another contradiction. And this is a contradiction. How you say to me that Muhammad is Masum, and then you find you say to me Muhammad is a sinner. How you say to me that I have to obey a Muhammad, and then you say to me Muhammad is a sinner. Who you say to me if you obey Muhammad, you obey God, but you say to me that Muhammad is a big time sinner to the point may Allah forgive your sin is not even guaranteed. In chapter two. Chapter 4, verse number 82, it says, Why they will not uh, uh, then bounder the Quran? If it had been from other than Allah, they would have found in their end much, uh, a lot of contradiction. So the Quran is giving me the, 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 uh, the, the, the way uh, uh, to discover his book from God or not. So, and the same method I use it in the Quran, it proven to me Quran cannot be from God. Okay, brother. You, you have really, really good questions, and, and inshallah, we, could, we will answer the, all those questions for you. So uh, okay, uh, so uh, as, you, as you know, that why was Adam and Eve, they, why, why were they taken out of? Why? Why were they taken out of? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Uh, you know, why, why did the dev, devil became the cursed one? But you know, why did the devil became the cursed one? No, no, my friend, why Adam and Eve was taken from heaven according to Islam? So, according to Islam, why Adam and Eve they were taken out of, uh, out of Jannah? Mm. Because the waswasa, a shaitan, mm. they, the waswasa shaitan happened to Eve. And mm. because when he, the waswasa shaitan happened to Eve, Eve told, told his husband, mm. Adam, mm. that let's go and eat from that tree. And that tree was forbidden for them to eat. When mm. they ate from that tree, what happened? Mm. They became naked and they were sent. Mm -hmm. Who is the face of this earth mm -hmm. where they had to live until now? We, we are from the lineage of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. But this and is my friend, this is a contradiction for what your prophet said. Your prophet said that Adam he commits sin because Allah he wrote for him his destiny to commit sin, and Adam he had no choice. Destiny, yes, that was his destiny. So, okay, so how Allah, but, why Allah, if this is his destiny, how Allah is going, how are you just blame the shaitan that he is the one who did whisper in Adam? But the fact it was destiny written by Allah. So the whole scenario written by Allah. Allah, he ordered shaitan to whisper. Allah, he ordered Adam to obey. Allah, he ordered Adam to sin. And then Allah, he punished Adam to sin. So how we can blame shaitan for that? If Allah is the one is behind this conspiracy, and he is the one who did that to Adam, Adam is a victim. So if you know the history of shaitan, when Adam was created, and, and, and the shaitan, when Allah told him to prostrate to Adam, mm. what did Shaitan say? Well, well, first of all, why Allah want to say to to uh, to Shaitan to protest? He did not even order him to protest. Uh, protest. Can you, can, no, no, my friend. No, no, my friend. In front of everybody, 
with, with my respect in a friendly way, I challenge you to show me where Allah He ordered Shaitan to put straight to Adam. Okay. If you show me that, I will shave my twenty foot mustache. Okay. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Hmm. Wait a minute. Hmm. You want me to help you? We can go to chapter 2, verse number 34. Okay, brother, wait a minute. Hmm. Do you feel like calling a friend or somebody? Brother, yes. We, I'm doing my, I'm doing, I'm going to my books and I'm looking from my books. Okay. All right. I would like you, by the way, to read my books in case you like to read it yourself. You can get them on Amazon.com. Okay. I'll read it Yeah. You can, you can search on Amazon for Christian friends and you can find my books. You know about your question and your book? Oh, I have answers for the question, not only questions. I answer my the questions in my books. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and read them. Okay. Okay, brother. So as you see, there's nowhere it says that Allah he ordered Shaitan to bow down. No, nowhere it says order. He did not order Shaitan to bow down. This is a mistake. Hmm? Surah Fajr. Surah what? 15. I am number. Surah 15. Okay, verse number 31. Yeah. Okay, but he did not say, he did not say he ordered Shaitan. It says he ordered the angels. This is a mistake. So this is a mistake in the this is a mistake in the Quran. The Quran is making a mistake, a very, very bad mistake. Because if Allah He ordered the angels to prostrate, why he accepting Shaitan to bow down? So if you know at that time Shaitan Shaitan was one, one of the person amongst the jinns. He was he was amongst the jinn that he was accepting all the messengers and he was listening to them. No, my friend, when I say I order all the cats to say yo. Why I'm expecting the dog to say meow too? He is not a cat. The Quran is so clear. It says, Allah, he ordered all the angels to prostrate. But Iblis, he did not. But Iblis is not an angel. You see, for the Christian, they believe that Shaitan is a foreign angel. You Muslim don't believe in that. You believe he's a genie, correct? 
So Allah, he ordered the angels why he is expecting shaitan to bow down. This is not even right. If I say all, if I say all, my, my, my friend, friend was there with the angels. So what? So what? It so doesn't an matter, angels, my friend. Angel okay, let us say, let us say he was there. But if I am saying all angels bow down, why I am upset from someone he is not an angel for not bowing down? That doesn't make sense. If I say so all it, all let's, girls let's, go let's out. Say today, let's say today. Mm. Okay, you have you have two uh, two friends. Let's say two friends, right? Mm. And you both of them they are really close to you. Mm. Okay, one one is Abdul and one is Abdullah. Abdul and Abdullah, good good names. Okay. Good good good, good names, right? Mm. So if you have two names, Abdul and Abdullah, mm. if you tell Abdul, you know, both of them are really close to you, both of them you call them Abduls. Mm. Okay? Because they are so close to you, you just call them Abdul. Mm. Okay? Mm. You tell Abdul, come over here. If one comes, another doesn't come. How you feel? Mm. But my friend, you forgot that Shaitan is not a Abdul and angels are not a Abdul. They are two kinds of creatures. They are not both a human. The both shaitan, are no, 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 no. Listen, they you said you would shave your mustache hmm. if I told you that Shaitan did not did not make Sajda. No, I, I no, I said to you, if you can show me where Allah He ordered the Shaitan to bow down, where He ordered him, He never ordered Shaitan, He ordered the angels. So read ayah number 28 from 28 and remember. When your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to create a human being from us, uh, some giving clay made okay. of decaying mud. Mm. Then, and when I form him perfect and blow him my, blow in him of my spirit, mm -hmm. you fall down before him prostrating. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the angels prostrated altogether. Yeah. But why, why, why is that? Peace was there, but he didn't prostrate it. Because if you have all the people standing there, you tell them to bow down, and there's one person who's not. My friend, down if to I if I did not if I say everybody put, uh, bow down, then that would make sense. But he did not say everybody bow down. He says, "Wa qala rabbuka lil malaika inni khaliqun basharun min sulsalin min hamain masnoon." So he was talking from the beginning to the angels, and you are the one who quoted that verse for me, verse number twenty-eight. So Allah, He was speaking from the beginning only to the angels. So the angels are listening now. The rest is not in their business to listen. If I say, I say to the angels, that's when I'm speaking to the angels. And then He said to them how He created Adam. No problem. And then He said, bow down. So all the angels fall and prostrate because He ordered the angels to bow down. So why He is expecting Iblis to bow down? He did not order Iblis to bow down. He, he ordered the angels. And you can see the same story because your prophet, he keep repeating himself. Chapter 2, verse number 34. Chapter 7, verse number 11. Chapter 15, 32. Chapter 17, verse number 61. Chapter 18, verse number 50. Chapter 20, verse number 16, 26, 95. Uh, uh, sorry, chapter... Uh, so it, it, it's all over. Chapter 38, verse number 74. But all of them confirming go, one thing. Go to, go to Surah 7. Surah 7. Okay. I, I am number 11. That's wonderful. Allah, he can, again, he ordered the angels to bow down. He did not order Iblis to bow down. First you do, illa Iblis. Okay, my friend, he, but he was speaking to the, to the angels. And we created you then. My friend, does it, does it say, does, does it say, my friend, my friend you, said, you said you speak Arabic. Read, it, read the verse for me in Arabic, please. Thank you very much. By the way, you have a nice voice. I'd like to hear you sometime if we have a party. My friend here says, We say to the angels, he did not say that to all. He said to the angels only. So how you say to me, read that verse because he ordered Iblis. He did not order Iblis. So we say to the angels, bow down to Adam. And they did bow down except Iblis. He did not. But this is a mistake here. If he is Iblis, is not one of the angels, how you expect him to bow down? That is the most silly statement ever. If I say all cats get out, then I will I cannot be upset from the dog for staying home. I said cats. Cats and dogs are not even the same. So the Quran confirmed 
that genies are made from fire, angels are made from light. They are two different creatures. And the word of your God, Allah, is so clear. He said, I ordered the angels, then told the angels, fall and prostrate. Did you see the name of Iblis here? No. So why he is expecting Iblis to bow down? So this is a clear mistake in the story. You now, go to the next verse. What, what, what does Allah ask? He did not, he, okay, he, yeah, yeah, but, but you see, okay, yeah, yeah but, okay, well, here we go. So he said to him, What, what, uh, what make you, uh, you know, like this is the, the funniest what stuff about Muhammad? Yes, when I ordered, okay, said, I'm better than him. Okay, I'm, 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 oh, thank you very much for mentioning this. This is a proven Islam to be a pagan religion because the first one who ordered angels to bow down to a man, it was Allah. Allah obviously is a pagan God. He should not allow anyone to bow down to Adam, to human. Adam is a human at the end of the day. How you ask them to bow down to Adam if he is just a man? So the first one who started paganism, worshipping someone, not God, bowing down, because bowing down is an act of a worship. And the same time, he said to him, why you are not bowing down? Iblis, he's smarter than the God of Islam. He said to him, why I want to bow down to him? What I did, if you read the story, my friend, and you're supposed to, I'm assuming you're a sheikh. It was the angels who accused Allah, saying to him, are you going to create someone he would do mischiefment? So Shaitan, the poor Shaitan, he did not even open his mouth. He did not say he would do mischiefment. He was not involved in the story. So Allah, he said to the angels, okay, I'm going to get you busted. I'm going to teach Adam uh, all the names. And then uh, he brought them and he said to them, okay, Adam, before he brought Adam in front of them and he told them, I will bring the things in the front of you and I want you to recite the names. They said to him, Allah, only you, you know, is only we know only what you taught us. And then Allah, He said to Adam, "Hey, Adam, tell them the names." And then Adam started reciting zucchini, potato, tomato, etc. And this is how Allah He proved that He is all knowledgeable, and the angels are wrong. So the whole story is about a fight between Allah and the angels. So what the poor Shaitan have to do with this? And then Allah He proved to them that because He named the zucchini and the tomato and the potato the names, supposedly that will meet His God, which is very silly. Because if I have a dog and I call him Susu and I ask you what is the name of my dog and you say to not to me I do not know that does not mean I'm God I'm the one who gave him the name what about we do with vice versa the opposite way what about the angel he asked them okay name it give it names and don't tell me the names and I will tell you the names which means I know the unseen so your God here is fabricating a story Muhammad and he is coming with a funny story he the angels fighting with Allah and then he expected that Iblis and then Allah he ordered the angels to bow down to Adam because they say that he would do mischiefment. And then Allah, he says to Adam, the, to Iblis, why he did not bow down? This is the most silly, funny story ever I heard in my life. Go ahead. Okay, brother. So you, as you know that, that uh, Iblis was, Iblis, his name at that time was Azazil. 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 You know okay. about it? I know, I know about it. This is your prophet. He took it from the, from the legion of the Jews. Okay. In the legion of the Jews, if you go to the book, it's called the book of Enoch, which is a false book. You will see that there's 21 angels. One of them is Azazir, Azazir and, and Muhammad is copying from the Jews. No problem. Go ahead. Okay. Mm. And by the way, where do you get this name from? Where it says that his name at that time, it was Azazir. Where do you get this name uh, from? Brother, first, first you have, I have to clarify your, your misunderstanding. Mm, why? Okay. Listen first. Listen, you're okay. saying, first, if God created you, mm. Okay, God created you and God tells, gives you an order to do, the, do this. Would you do it or not? If God created me and ordered me to do that? To do something. Well, depend like if I am, if I'm a, I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a, to go and pick up that stone or pick up that tree, take out that tree, big, big that tree. Mm. Would you do it or not? It depends because if I am a, if I'm a believer, I will do it. If not, I will not. Yeah, that's what the brothers thank you so much for that. So if you are a believer, you would do it. If mm. you're a believer in God, let's say Jesus, Jesus is the apply him, he came to that, he told you mm. that um Mr. Christian, mm. let's let's go and kiss this stone or kiss this tree. Would you do it or not? Okay, did, did, Allah, did Allah say to Muhammad kiss a stone? You, you are the one who told me that the Listen, Arab... Listen, I'm just giving an example. My friend, you are the one who said to me that the Arab before Muhammad used to kiss a stone. So you're a prophet kissing the, the same as the Arab pagan Arab they kiss the stone. He's worshiping the same God. Correct? Wait a minute, brother. So 
you, you for some time, uh, my, 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 my example was to, to you once mm. that if Jesus come today and tells you to prostrate to this tree, mm. would you prostrate or not? If Jesus, he told me to a tree? He told me a tree. No, I will leave Christianity. This, this is an example. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if he, if he said that to me, worship a tree, to bow down to a tree, I will leave Christianity. So why would you leave Christianity if you believe because in that, that, God? Because he cannot be God. He cannot be God then because he is asking me to bow down to idols. This is not God he, be from he God. Try, he's trying to check you if you're obeying him or not. No, no, my friend. God will not it, 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 it test me by giving me uh, uh, order to do sin. This is false uh, argument. So you are saying to me that your God Allah, your God Allah, he wanted to prove that he is God. He ordered you to kiss a stone. That's mean he's a, he's a shaitan. You know, is it you? Is it, you know, it's like, okay. Is, is it you? My topic to you is something. I'm, I'm staying somewhere else. You're going somewhere else. I'm telling you hmm. that if Jesus came today and tell you to prostrate to a tree, try to check if you are. If you are obeying him or not, no. Uh, you said I will not. not I will not. Him. I will not obey him because that means he is the Dajjal. He is the false Messiah. He is maybe Muhammad. There is no way Jesus will order me to uh, to go. To. I have another question from you. Go give me that. Uh, try try something better. A man, a man comes uh, comes comes down to you. Mm. In one hand he has he has Jannah. In the second hand he has fire. Mm. And this guy he can he can kill and he will bring the person back to life. Mm. This guy can make a person poor and rich. Hmm. And this guy claims to be Jesus. Would you believe him? No. Because the Lord, he said to me, it is the spirit. I have to examine it. So if he teach me false teaching, we don't only go only because uh, somebody, the Messiah, he said that there's false prophet and false teachers will come after me. And even he says, not everyone says to me, God, God will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do is well. And then they said to him, well, isn't it us? We did cast demon and we did miracle in your name. So people, they will come and they make miracles, but they, they can be false using the name of God. So my friend, that is not the proof that this is Jesus. The proof is his ethic, his teaching, examine the spirit. The spirit of God is holy. Your God cannot be holy. And you are the one who just a second ago, you said to me that the black stone was sent from heaven. What kind of God will teach that there's a stone sent from heaven and that, it was, that make it holy? By the way, you are wrong about that. Because according to your Islamic books, the black stone became black. It's it, it only because of sin. According to your Islamic books, the black stone because be, became black because women, they used to touch their vagina with their blood when they have period, and they placed their hand inside the stone. And that is the sin, how we it make it. You know, because women at that time, they believe if she is not getting pregnant, obviously Allah, Baal, is upset and he is not making her bread net so what you do she go around the stones around the kaaba naked men and women they go naked and you know that that the arab before muhammad even in the time of muhammad used to go naked around the kaaba and then the woman she placed her hand in her vagina and she put it in the wall and in, in, in the in the black stone you, you are explaining the arab before Yes, but, uh, but, but, but this is what Muhammad, he called it from the Arab. You said to me that Allah, he said that this is a black stone from heaven. But you know, you, 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 you are trying to ignore what you Muslim says. This is not even the Arab, what they say. The, uh, this is what the Muslims believe. Let me show you, my friend. Here we go. This is okay. Tafsir al-Hawi. You can, you can see the screen, right? Okay, no, yeah. I see okay. Okay. okay, Tafsir al-Hawi. It says that, this is your Imam saying, and Gabriel, he brought the, the black stone from the, from the sky. And it says that uh, Abu Qubais, that there's a mount next to Mecca. I don't know if you've been there before. Next to it, a small mount, it's called Abu Qubais. The Muslim believe that Abu Qubais hold the black stone inside his belly during the, 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 the flood of Noah to save it from being drift by the flood because the flood of Noah covered all the earth, including the Kaaba. And then when the flood is over, so the black stone came over. And then it was hiding during the, the flood of Noah, and it was a, a white pearl from heaven. And when the blood of the women from period touched it, during the, the pre-Islamic of ignorance, it became a black. Am I lying, my friend? Or this is your box? Okay, brother. If you know the history before before Islam came, the people what they do to it, just before Islam, you get it? 
doesn't matter doesn't matter this is a this is a stone inherited from the pagan and the muhammad adapted the same as he did with as safa al marwa is it as safa al marwa it was a practice of the pagan before islam and then the muslims they refused to practice and then muhammad he said to them don't you know that uh, allah he just gave me a verse saying that as safa al marwa is a from the, the the ritual of allah how in the world the safa al marwa is from the ritual of allah, of allah? From, allah from allah because if you know the, the mother of ismail when she put her baby on the floor and she was looking for water and because the baby was crying and she had no food, no milk in her chest. Hmm. So she would go to one mount and look for water and then walk to the, and walk to the other mount <laughs> and look for water okay. to see if anyone, any caravan is coming. Hmm. Okay, my friend, is that to make it holy? I mean, this is the most silly answer ever I can hear with respect to you. So if a woman, her name is Hajar, she go to three, two mount, that make it, we will make it from the ritual of water. Yeah, question, question, listen, brother. Hmm. Your problem over here is that your belief in God is not not strong. You really? believe your belief is mostly psychologically. Your hmm. your questioning is mostly mostly scientific. You you are required to prove everything logically, scientifically. Hmm. Where with God, everything is not proven scientifically. My friend, I am I am proving to you from your Islamic books. What you said to me about the Safa Marwa is false, because if you go to your Islamic books. And you will see that there was two idols for two men, a man and a woman. They have sex, and because they have sex, the Arab believe that Allah He cursed them and He made them idols. No, it has nothing to do with Ibrahim. Ibrahim, he, he never been. Ibrahim, he never been in the Kaaba. This is the fiction of, of Muslims. There is no way Abraham will go there. And by the way, if Abraham he went there, why he left? Why he did not die there? I mean, how in the world this guy, he went all the way and Allah, he ordered him to build the Kaaba or to rebuild you know, the Kaaba. He has two kids. One kid is Haq and the second kid is Ma'il. Mm. He said, okay. from that you know that he has two kids. One is Ma'il and one is Haq. Okay. And is Ishmael, Ishmael is from where? Ishmael is from, he's from the, he's the son, one of the son of Ibrahim. Okay. Who is his mother? Who is his mother? His mother is Hajar. Okay, Hajar. So she is an Egyptian, right? Yes. Okay, Abraham is from where? Abraham is from going, where? We're going to, I'm trying to explain you saying that it was a picnic worship, worship, but it's not a picnic worship. It okay, was my, a friend, my, my friend. Even if you know, even if you know that the, 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 the Jamara in, uh, in uh, Mena. Where well, people go on the hash time, they do the jamara. Hmm. Well, do you know why, why people do jamara over there? Because this is from the pagan belief that believe that there is a shaitan, he have a house there. Brother, brother, it's not a pagan belief. It's a pagan it's not, belief. Brother, listen, at the time of Prophet Ibrahim, hmm. when Prophet Ibrahim saw a dream, in a dream he saw that he was slaughtering his own son. Hmm. Okay, he was slaughtering his own son, Ismail. And when he was taking... Ismail in his uh, with him, the say, Satan he came, he came to him and uh, he came to him in a form of he came to him in a form of a big shaitan, then a medium shaitan, then a small shaitan. Hmm. But Ibrahim and Ismail both they rejected them. Hmm. They rejected the shaitan. They told them a story. Okay, uh, may I ask you please? Like, where you get the story from? What was what said Ibrahim hmm. that that the dream that you saw is not true? Don't follow the, the dream, even. The shaitan told Ismail that don't follow the dream. It's not true. Uh, well, okay. So, so you are saying to me that the dream, the dream uh, Abraham he saw to slaughter his son is from shaitan. It's not from shaitan. It's, it's from the, Allah. The dream, that, the dream that he saw okay. was from Allah. Okay. Yalla. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said to me that shaitan he came to him as a big shaitan and a small shaitan. In three different forms. Hmm. Different form. Like, what is the form? What is the form? The first form is, is on big, bigger form. The second form is medium. The third, is, uh, the third one is the small. What okay. is the form? What is the form? What is the form? He's a shaitan. Is a, if you know shaitan is jinn. Okay. He would come in different shapes mm. to try to put waswasa in the heart of Ismail. Okay. So shaitan will come in different form. form. Not follow the dream. Not follow the okay. end of the dream. Okay, so, so is it true? Is it true that Shaitan he come to to uh, to the pro to Prophet Abraham, and he was trying to burn him by coming as a lizard? So, 
But uh, let me tell you, it, that you are going back to the stories of Ibrahim and Islam. You are, you are, you are, you are you going to mention that to me, because so I'm, I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you that Islam is nothing but fictions. How in the world want me to believe that Shaitan, he became a lizard, and then he started blowing wind at, at Abraham, and the purpose is to burn him alive. How in the world do you want me to believe that your God is saying something really real, and yet uh, uh, a little lizard, Salamander, he is burning Abraham by blowing wind at him? So if you know the shaitan, shaitan from day one is the name of all human beings. Hmm. But a shaitan is a Salamander. I'm not saying it's Salamander. Well, you're a prophet, he said so. But you're a prophet, he said so. You're a prophet, he said so. Are you against what your prophet said? You know what, what I'm saying. Listen to me first, then mm. we'll go what our prophet is the upon said. Mm. What I'm saying is that Shaitan from day one, he's our enemy. Mm. You know, you believe that? Mm. Yes or no? I believe what, say again? Do you believe that Shaitan, devil, he is from day one our enemy? Of all human beings, yes, yeah, the enemy. No, I believe Allah is the real enemy because the Quran says that the one who Allah he deceived, no one can guide. So, shaitan is not a problem. If shaitan misguide me, I can be guided by someone, but if Allah deceived me, nobody can guide me. So, the number one enemy is the real deceiver, is Allah. Shaitan is just a victim, the same as what your prophet he said about Adam. Adam he commits sin, why? Because Allah he wrote in his destiny that he will commit sin. So shaitan is just an employee for Allah. He do what Allah told him to, to make people commit sin. So why you are blaming shaitan when the fact not made him an employee? If you know if you go back to the IMF, okay. when, when Allah asked him, why didn't you prostrate to Shait uh, to uh, when Allah asked Iblis, why didn't you prostrate to Adam? Hmm. What did he say? He said that you, you, may, you, you may okay, here we go. Here we go. Anyway, guys, that's that's enough. And this was a recording of our debate with Sheikh Abdul Wadud. And here you notice how the Muslims, even the one who claim sheikhs, they are shaky and they have no answer and they can't explain anything. And here you notice I go up and down, they bend in the size of the Muslim. So when he's a sheikh, I go down to his level. When he's not, I have to go the lower. All of them they know nothing about Islam. And this guy he was in trouble because wherever he go. He getting spanked. He keep changing topic, jumping like a monkey from a branch to a branch, hoping that by changing topic he can do something better and different topic. But wherever he go, he will be spanked. And my fingerprints is all over his body until now. He promised that he will come back and he will answer my questions, and he never come back. But that's very normal. So. When the Muslims he try to debate you about something, the first thing he do is to answer without answering. Hey brother, you have many questions. We need to sit together, a brother, face to face. What does this have to do? Yeah, I have many questions, and you gave me zero answer in the whole conversation. All right. So, as you see, debunking the city stupid cult pagan cult of Islam is very easy but it's easy for someone who knows and this is why we encourage you to take notes educate yourself because they play games they lie and they will never answer we don't debate with those Mohammedan in order to get Islam busted you have to trap it's like a, a hide and seek game there's no honesty you see, in a debate between two religious people, each one of them should answer based on his belief. Muslims don't do that. Muslims, they switch to the fence mood, lying, not being honest. I don't mind if you switch to the fence mood, actually. This is very normal. But why you are lying? Because simply, they knew that if they tell the truth, it's a disaster. But in fact, lying will not save you. Lying will make you even look more ugly. Because you create a lie and then you find yourself need to create a thousand lie to cover the first lie. Shaitan, he come to Abraham in three sizes. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid story like this? Three sizes, what does that mean? Size doesn't matter, brother. Shaitan come in three sizes. 
What is that? Small, medium, large? And when you ask him, okay, what the form? He have no answer. And you do not understand the concept of God. Suddenly he switched to talk about the concept of God. And when and, and, the, and the second he switched to a topic of his choice, he got spanked to. The concept of God. That God is one, but he sent us a stone. And this stone is holy, and it was white. And this white stone became dark black because black is the color of sin. And why it became a black? Because women, they used to touch their private part when they have a period and they placed inside the black stone. And because women, they are touching it with the black, uh, their blood with the black stone from period, we have to kiss it. When we ask him why the prophet kissed the black stone, he said, uh, why you kiss the black stone? He said, because the prophet kiss it. Mm -hmm. Once actually, I, I was chatting with a Muslim website just for fun. I said, uh, brother, why? Uh, I have a question. I said, are you a Muslim or a Christian? I said, I'm a Christian. I want to convert to Islam, brother. Okay, can you, brother, uh, you know, which mostly they convert to Islam. This is what the website is about. So uh, why why the Muslims kiss the black stone? He said, because the prophet kissed it. I said, why the prophet kiss it? He said, because it's holy. I said, why it's holy? He said, because the prophet kiss it. I mean, isn't it obvious Islam is wonderful? Why the why 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 the Muslim kiss the black stone? Because the Prophet kiss it. Why the Prophet kiss it? Because it's holy. And why it's holy? Because he kissed it. It's amazing how smart they are. And the funny they call others pagan. And they lie and they say the Christians they worship the cross. There's no Christian worship the cross. Otherwise, we will be kissing every electric column in the street. The cross is just symbolic of what happened to Jesus. Nothing more, nothing less. It is symbolic. The Bible says clearly that you cannot worship anything save God. Nobody worship the cross. We believe in the cross, which means that Jesus was crucified. What do we believe in? The piece of wood. The shape is not what we believe in. What we believe in is what happened. That Christ, he was crucified. So they lie about us and say we worship the cross. We don't. Big fat lie. While Muhammad, he says, if you touch a black stone, the black stone will erase your sin. Jesus, he warned us from following such a belief. What kind of God? You say you believe in the oneness of God. And then Muhammad, he said, that whoever touched the corner of Yemen, which is the corner in the Kaaba facing the Yemen, because it has some stones from the temple of Al-Makkah, the moon god, whoever touched them, the black stone and the Yemeni corner, is going to erase his sin, as you see. What kind of religion this religion is? And Islam, obviously, is a religion based on ritual, not in belief, not in reality. As an example, look at this hadith here. <laughs> we were with the Messenger of Allah when he asked, is, is any one of you able to earn thousands good deeds? Okay, how we can earn thousands, thousand good deeds? Earn, earn. I mean, we're talking about is that the stock market? Okay, how we can do that? He said, they said to him, How okay, a prophet, uh, how can uh, uh, one earn a thousand good of deed a prophet a day? The guy, like, was like, What are you serious, prophet? So the Abdul is asking, like, What the heck? I want to get thousand of deed now. And the prophet is the only one knows how to do these deeds. He's like the recipe. He's the cook at his time. So he said, a thousand good deed a day? So the prophet, he said, by saying, subhanallah, a, a hundred times. If I say subhanallah a hundred times, I get one thousand deed. 
So if I say subhanallah 200 times, I get 2,000 deed. <laughs> subhanallah, 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 my guys, the deed of Christian Prince is increasing now. Like it's going skyrocketing. Subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. I mean, this is how you earn deed in this cult. How silly. How you lose deed if you have a dog. If you have a dog in your home, Allah take from your deeds. How to make deeds if you kill a lizard do you remember if you kill a lizard let's find the hadiths if you kill a lizard from the first shot Allah will give you extra deed let us see Where is the hadith? Here we go. Whoever kills a lizard, a house lizard with one blow will have such and such reward from Allah. What the heck? Lizard? Allah waging jihad against lizard? Mickey Mouse have fatwa on him. Lizard have fatwa on him. I mean, everything is the enemy for Allah. And what is the problem with Mr. Lizard? He blow fire at Abraham. He tried to kill him. And by the way, look, Lizard, they look like a dragon. Look at this, man. It's dangerous. He's in the size of your finger. So we have to take what the Prophet said seriously. If you hit him with the first raw, or the first shot Allah will give you the maximum reward if you kill him from the second shot he will give you 50% reward if you get him from the third shot that's mean you are not a good believer sorry so like Allah will give you 30% of the reward so the, the the real winner is the one who killed the lizard from the first shot and why because of the following Once a woman, she came and she found Aisha, she is holding an iron stick. Oh, mother of the believer, what do you do with this? A woman, she said to her. Aisha, she said, we kill those house lizards with it. For the prophet SAWFM shortwave said, told us that Ibrahim was thrown into the fire. There was no beast on earth that did not try to put, put it out. No beast on earth did not try to put it out. Guys, I want to make a movie about this. Elephants, tigers, dogs, everybody bring in water. <laughs> bring water. Hey, brother, ducks, bring water. Chickens, bring water. All animals in the world bring in water to put the fire down, except Mr. Lizard. He was the only one who was blowing wind. <laughs> To burn Abraham, how evil he is. Disgusting. And now we want to kill him. And the funny, the Muslim, they say, which means uh, no soul will pay for the sin of somebody else. Okay, is this lizard is the one who was existing at the time of Abraham? Why are you killing this lizard? Uh, is that revenge from his seeds? What a stupid cult. <laughs> anyway, if you are new in our channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you are old, don't forget to unsubscribe. Uh, and by the way, uh, this is a way to earn deed in Islam. Because if you do a bad deed, and then Allah, by doing good deed after that, that will erase the bad deed and will give you many doubles of it. Sometimes it says like one double, but it can be a hundred double. 
So subscribe and subscribe, subscribe and subscribe. So Allah will make you have a deeds, Muslims. Now for sure, this is, does not go to the Christians. We are smarter than this. And if you are new on our channel, I advise you not to come again because you will become addicted. You will come here every day and then your wife, she will fight with you. I want to say thank you for being here, all of you guys. Don't forget to download the videos and feel free to post them whatever you wish. All my videos are free for you. They don't have to stay in my channel. Actually, I don't keep them in my channel. They are yours. You can post them in your channel. Good for you. Get more subscribers. Good for you. If you speak different languages, add subtitle. But if you don't mind, just put a link underneath that this is coming from this page in YouTube so people, they can join us when we are live. So thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, if you like to learn more about Islam, you can search my books in Amazon. We have it in Spanish, English, French, German, Swedish, etc. You can learn my, you know, from my books a lot, and they are full of reference. And as you see, we have it all, and we are the one who can get the prophet of Islam exposed with no mercy. And we are not politically correct. We say things as it is, no makeup, no paint. The one who like it, like it. The one who don't like it, just leave. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we see you soon again. Thank you.